Hi, welcome to another episode of Cold Fusion, where I cover anything in science, technology, business or history. Take a close look at this scene. It looks just like any other movie scene, but it's actually a recreation of a scene in The Matrix, but it's made entirely within a game engine. Yeah, so what, you might be thinking. You might also be thinking, while tech demos look realistic, they're always pre-rendered and they use visual tricks just to make it seem more realistic. But what if I told you that this was running in real time and running on console hardware right now, today, on the PS5, Xbox Series X and even Series S? Scenes like this highlight what's so exciting about Unreal Engine 5 by Epic Games. A few days ago, they showcased a Matrix game concept and its purpose was to show that the future of gaming has indeed arrived. Just take a look at this. This is what I imagined the games of the future would look like as a kid. So, I'm really excited about this. In this episode, we'll take a look at what was shown, as well as some other Unreal Engine 5 information, and then we'll see what this means for the future of gaming. Let's get into it. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. When we last visited Unreal Engine 5, I showed many aspects of what was nearly possible, but there were a number of people in the comment section who just couldn't believe it. They thought cinema quality gaming was still 20 years away. Later on in that very episode, I showed that Unreal Engine was indeed capable of cinema quality film productions. It was already being utilized by amateur filmmakers with incredible results, and we'll see another one of those at the end of the episode. But I guess the commenters in the last video just didn't watch the whole thing. Epic Games must have experienced something similar on social media because this Matrix demo was made as a direct response to the people who just didn't believe that the last demo was real. They wanted to show that their technology was feasible. Let's just take a second to observe and appreciate just how far graphics have come with this engine. Observe the detail and the presence of the light and how it makes it feel like it's a real place and not just flat like most graphics. So as mentioned in the last episode, there are two main technologies here that make this a step above what was previously possible in the gaming industry. The first technology is Lumen, a real-time lighting solution that mimics the way light bounces in the real world, but it's achieved in such a way that it's less of a burden than traditional ray tracing. Previously, I mentioned lighting is a key aspect that sets video game graphics apart from pre-rendered Pixar movies. Now both of them can have that presence and realism but the game is free to run in real time. To showcase the real time lighting effects in the demo, there are settings where users can play with the sun's location and see for themselves how it affects the world. The second technology is Nanite. This allows for the polygon limit to largely be removed from games, and this is huge. Until now, game developers were limited by the number of polygons that they could have in one scene. The more you have, the more detailed it can be. But if you add too many, it begins to slow the system down. So it was a trade-off between artistic fidelity and gaming performance. But this is no longer the case. With the polygon limit removed, everything is extremely detailed all the time and crazy things are possible. The city in this demo comprises of 7 million assets made up of millions of polygons each. There are 7,000 buildings and there are over 45,000 parked cars, not to mention the cars that are driving around. There are 260 kilometers of road and 512 kilometers of sidewalk. For the first time, 
such a vast amount of detail can be rendered and played all at once in real time. Objects popping in and out of view as the player gets closer is largely a thing of the past. Buildings off in the distance can remain detailed. So how does Nanite work? Well, according to Epic Games, quote, during importing, meshes are analyzed and broken down into hierarchical clusters of triangle groups. During rendering, Clusters are swapped out on the fly at varying levels of detail based on the camera view and connect perfectly without cracks to neighbouring clusters within the same object. Data is streamed on demand so that only visible detail needs to reside in memory. Nanite runs in its own rendering pass that completely bypasses traditional draw call. And just to highlight how much detail there is, John Lineman from Digital Foundry says that it's the first playable game that is seen with a chain link fence that is modelled geometry and not just a texture. With the polygon limit removed, there's now creative room to do more things like this, where with previous technology, such things would have been a massive waste of resources. Another technology we touched on last time was MetaHuman, and that's Unreal Engine 5's character building solution. In the Matrix demo, it's proved itself in ways that I wouldn't have expected. So both Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss had their faces photo scanned in, but the third character in the back of the car is a stock metahuman character. Epic Games wanted to show that metahuman characters could be right beside digitally scanned assets and still hold up. There's also other technology built on top of Unreal Engine 5 that is frankly incredible. ZRT Face Trainer uses Unreal Engine 5 combined with AI trained on 4D movement data to create CGI puppets, and they give some amazing results. Just take a look at this face. When MetaHuman is combined with Blender, the results are also amazing. I do also want to talk about the Chaos Engine in Unreal. It enables real-time destruction. In this car chase scene, when a car crashes and rolls, it's not something that's pre-rendered and controlled by the vision of the artists, it's the actual physics engine at work. The same goes for the glass breaking in the rear mirror. The publication Digital Foundry did some tests with the playthrough and found that when cars exploded or rolled, each time was different and unique. There's also an interesting scene in the demo where Neo is on the roof dodging a projectile. According to The Verge, Epic Games managed to find the original Warner Brothers Neo asset and import it into Unreal Engine 5. They literally combined a cinematic model with a real-time game engine. I think that's incredible and I don't think it's something we've ever seen before. Interestingly, the city was procedurally generated based on algorithmic rules. This meant that the game designers and developers didn't have to painstakingly manually place every object, building, or road. It was done semi-automatically, freeing up more time for other things like fine-tuning of the world, and in the future, in the case of a real game, working on the actual story for once. Epic Games is giving this Matrix world away for free. All the assets and all the code, so users can modify it till their heart's content. So I think that's pretty cool, and we'll have to see what people come up with. Speaking of story and creativity, the amateur film community using Unreal Engine 5 is really starting to ramp up. I think this is definitely going to be a space to watch. Have a look and you'll know what I mean. Of course, it's my last 
today and I have to go into a dark, scary cave. <sighs> Let's just do this. So it all can't be roses, right? There has to be some bad stuff here. Well, I've noticed three main weaknesses. When driving fast or smashing into a lot of cars, there can be frame rate drops. Epic Games is aware of this issue and says that it's looking to make improvements and optimizations before the release of the engine. The second one is MetaHuman seems to be its weakest point. The way people walk and the way the main character runs in the free roam section is a little clunky, but maybe this is being worked on as well. And the last thing I noticed is that reflections in the distance sometimes flicker, and this is especially noticeable at night. As said before, this is a work in progress and they're still fine tuning before the official release of Unreal Engine 5. So in summary, I think it's safe to say that next gen has finally arrived. During my first viewing of the demo, I had a part of my mind telling me that what I was seeing was real. Like I was watching a live action film, I think we've finally crossed the threshold of photorealism, and this is thanks to the limits being removed from game design. If I were to guess, we're probably about 80% of the way to realism with this demo. It may just be that more iterative improvements take us that extra 20%. It was very fitting for this demo to be done in collaboration with the makers of the Matrix trilogy. It asks us to question if what our eyes are seeing are indeed real. I definitely know that I'll be remembering this moment in computer graphics for a long time. So what do you guys think? Are you excited for the future of gaming? Or something else? What other applications can you see this being used for? Let me know in the comment section below. If you'd like to discuss this in further detail, head over to the Cold Fusion Discord. The link will be in the description below. So thanks for watching. This has been Dagogo, and you've been watching Cold Fusion. If you did like this video, feel free to subscribe. And I'll catch you again soon for the next episode. Cheers guys, have a good one.